intro. I'll do my intro when I want. Welcome to Rats Out Review. What's up, Lou? Bonjour, you cheese eating surrender monkey. <laughs> What's up, Greg? Hey, how's it going? Really, know. dog? You, you waited until we started, and now hey, you're gonna... mm-hmm. we have a, we have a special <laughs> guest host. Hey, Pucci. Yeah, CC. Come on, here, come here. I hope you didn't name him after Deville. <laughs> huh? No, it's uh, my roommate's dog. She's adopted. I, uh, I don't. Really, yeah, jump right up on the records. Cool, thanks. <laughs> oh. uh, uh, <laughs> and a phone drop. Do Perfect. over. Yeah. No, I'm keeping this all in because that's the best part of the yeah. show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love that. Sure new, is. I'm new intro. A, I'm proud to be a dog lover, so anytime a dog wants to come on Rat Side Review, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, we never get to see your dog. Oh, Aloysius? Yeah. Uh, he's just... Uh, he's just He's just your, you know, your friendly neighborhood shithead. I mean, Shih Tzu, so he's just, <laughs> you know, Shih Tzu. Um, well, while, we're, while he's uh, getting himself situated again, um, I just want to throw a little shout out because, uh, you know, he watches the show once in a while. But um, Mick Watkins, um, he actually has a show. What is his show's name on YouTube? Um, I'm forgetting it. Anybody know? No, uh, I can look it up. I would quick. have to look it up. I don't know. What to talk uh, about it's it. a long name. Sorry, Mick. I, uh, I just yeah. forgot it. <laughs> but anyway, he's got a band called Wild Ride. Uh, w Y L D R Y D E, not spelled the normal way. But uh, he just remastered uh, his uh, first EP, and I picked it up uh, last week. So go to uh, their uh, band camp and go pick up a copy. Uh, it's fairly cheap, so and good music. So uh, go pick it up. And his YouTube page is just Mick, yeah, Mick, Mick Watkins. Oh, but I thought he had a name for the show. I think he does have a name for the show. Oh, yeah. Rock, I rockin', he did, uh, rockin' uh, Record Reviews. That's what it is. Something like that. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, that's, I think that's it. I, I just remember it's long. Sorry, Mick. This <laughs> is a little long. That's why I forgot. <laughs> I actually subscribed to him on uh, Ralph's recommendation. So. Oh, well, good. So everybody, please go subscribe to his thing. And please, uh, is my thing going on and off? Because I see my camera blinking. The camera's blinking a little bit. but Yeah, you keep, like, freezing for a millisecond and then unfreezing. Yeah, that's weird. Right? Yeah. I don't know what the hell that's about. Pepsi. I just figured <laughs> I was having another LSD flashback. And... <laughs> it's quite Greg, I've been meaning to ask you this question. Is that like a painting from the Duran Duran Rio sessions behind you? Because I love that painting. No, um, I, I don't know if that same guy did the uh, album cover or not, but that's a guy that he was popular in the 80s. His name was uh, Patrick Nagel. He did a bunch of those, and that's a print of uh, his painting of Miss March 1981, I believe. <laughs> we have no time to look that up, but I'll do it after yeah. the show. And do it after the show. Uh, it's, it's a very creepy poster. But anyway. Uh, I love it. Lou, uh, Lou and me are right. You're wrong. Yeah. yeah. Like but that. continue. Not Birds of the feather flock together. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, so t- this week we're doing uh, part one of uh, Corner. Greg's wanted to do yes. a, corner, a Corner show for quite a while now. So I said, let's get it done and do it. And uh, what are we doing, Greg? What albums? Well, today, uh, part one, I've determined, is going to be the Death Cult demo, and then the first album, R.I.P. or Rest in Peace, however you want to say it, and then their second full-length, Punishment for Decadence, which, unfortunately, I don't have the CD of Death Cult anymore, but you do. It's a a real R.I.P. Very cool. Punishment for Decadence. I noticed... The the punishment for decadence. You have the cover, same cover as I do as well. Yeah, I know there's an original cover. And that's not yep. The original. I'll reference that when we get to the record. Yeah. yeah nice. All right. We'll all the, that later, then. But all minor yeah. um, noise I records. So. Is Hell's Gate. I think it's by. Yeah, I was just looking it up. I forgot. I, I forget how to pronounce the painter's name, but I know the name of it is Hell's Gate. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's part of Hell's Gate, uh, the Hell's Gate. Like, yes, it's a, it's a, it's a panel from a big Renaissance yeah. painting. I, I actually, I wish they wouldn't have changed it because I like that better than the thing with the skeleton. It's kind of 
they changed it because of oh man, I'm drawing a blank on the guy's name, and I was just watching an interview with him earlier. But uh, the guy that ran Noise Records at the time, he disagreed with Marky. He thought it wasn't metal enough, so they took the skeleton with the violin, which was it was supposed to be a gatefold. Mm-hmm. with that whole panel on the front mm-hmm. and back cover. And then on the inside was going to be the picture of the band mm-hmm. and the skeleton with the violin. But they put the picture of the band on the back cover and then stuck the skeleton with the violin on the front and ditched the Hell's Gate panel because they thought it didn't look metal enough. No way. No way. Wrong choice. But, hey, it's the music that counts, right? Yes, absolutely. Exactly. So who cares what that artwork looks like? But uh, let's start with Death Cult. Uh, like I said, I have the. Uh, yes. It's it's a bootleg version, and it also comes with uh, live at I can't even pronounce that. Zek, Carl. Zek Carl. Yeah. Nineteen eighty-eight. Um, I didn't listen to that. I just listened to the uh, demo stuff, and, uh, and that's a great live show. I think it's a soundboard recording. But um, one day I'll get to it. Yeah. But a uh, very famous person is on this uh, demo. Yes, Tom Warrior of Celtic Frost, and they were all friends. So to, to, to get to that and to clear up a little bit of, I don't know if, it, yeah, confusion I'll call it, but so everyone knows that Coroner was Celtic Frost roadies at one point, but that's not how they started out and how they meant, hmm. how they met. They actually weren't uh, Frost's roadies until the tour for to Megatherion. When Celtic Frost first came to the U.S., um, Corner actually started even before Hellhammer in about 1983. And the only guy that was an original member of both lineups is uh, Marky Edelman, the drummer. Mm-hmm. And uh, the original Corner was very more hard rock, classic heavy metal type in vain and... Um, <clears throat> They put out a couple demos, but they were really popular in like the Switzerland underground. But Marky had to go and do his mandatory military service. And when he came back out, the band had broken up. Mm-hmm. So he revived it. And um, I forget exactly how him and Tommy met. I think, yeah, Tommy and Ron were in a band called Diamond together. And then the three of them got together and they had a lot of mutual interest like um malmstein which is really apparent in uh tommy's guitar playing although one thing that's always amazed me about corner and you know they have in the um documentary they did for the autopsy box set it's called corner rewind they put it up on their youtube for free for their fans with the english subtitles i recommend anyone that's a fan go watch it it's awesome but they've got like max from sepultura and mikhail on there from uh Opeth just talking about uh, you know how they influence them so much and what a difference it made. Hmm. Yeah, is there any of those early demos available anywhere? I'd be curious. I I know there's some bootleg releases out there. Um, I believe the first one is called Depths of Hell. Um, but honestly, it's been a long time since I've seen one, and they gloss over it for the most part in the documentary. Like, they mention it, but it's not a big part of it. But um, they do play a song in it. Hmm. But um, I know there's boots out there, but I don't think it's ever been, like, officially released or anything. Yeah. be interested to hear that. But yeah. uh, I haven't listened to this in, in quite a while. I bought it and, you know, gave it, like, one listen. And it's it's demo quality. Okay. But it's... Oh, yeah. What? But a- anyway, so... <laughs> They got together, and they're amazing musicians. You know, they're they're the musicians' thrash band, basically. Right, yeah, yeah. Best thrash band there ever was. But anyway, we'll touch on that later. <laughs> <laughs> so they were playing around and getting popular and doing their demos. And they, Tom and Martin from Celtic Frost, knew them from before with Coroner, and they were real into it. And when they went to make the... Um, demo tape you know they were um uh they asked tom if he would come in and write the lyrics and do the vocals for him because they were still looking for a vocalist at the time so he he agreed to do that he came in and wrote it and sang for them and there's actually video in that documentary of him cutting the vocals for it too it's pretty cool yeah and um they put it out they did 
uh, I think 250 cassette copies and Tom gave it to the head of noise records, which is how they ended up landing their um, deal. But Tommy and Marky, the drummer and the guitarist offered to be frost roadies for their 86 U S tour with Voivod and running wild. So they used that as kind of a promotion tour and handed out death cult to everyone. So by the time they got back to Europe, it was in fanzines everywhere. So Noise Records called them like immediately. And when Ron Royce realized it was acceptable to sing in a guttural uh, tone like Tom does, because he wasn't really familiar with that type of music, just uh, Tommy and Marky really were at the time. He said, well, I can do that. We don't need a vocalist. So they just went and really refined their attack after this. But yeah. yeah, this is what got them out there and known. All right. So, Lou, what did you think of the uh, demo? I thought the demo was really good. Uh, the fact that Tom Warrior is actually helping them out on vocals and wrote the lyrics for it. Um, had I probably been alive at the time and... Well, I mean, I was alive at the time, but I mean, I was too young to remember Celtic Frost in 86 because I was only um, six. But <laughs> be, having become a Celtic Frost fan as I was getting older, you know, I, I discovered more of a tales at 13, 14. So knowing what a fan of that album I became at that age, I probably would have become just as much a fan of this band because of the demo. And knowing what they became after, you know, I'm sorry, not after, but when they released their first album, it's a great sign of what's to come. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe how well his his voice and his words fit in with their music. I mean, it was almost, I almost wanted to call the Celtic Frost Junior, but I didn't want to take anything away from the band Coroner. Right. And, right. and and that's with all due respect to both bands and you know and and all the musicians in them. Yeah, yeah I kind I kind of feel the same way because, uh, like you say, with Tom Warrior singing, it does feel like it's a, it's Celtic Frost in a way, you know. And even the guitar playing and even the way that some of the songs sounded, they they seemed like Celtic Frost songs. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of hard to, as I'm listening, realize that it's actually Corner and not and not uh, Celtic Frost. And. Uh, there's one thing I just wanted to put up. I am a fan of good production. However, sometimes, and history has proven this, that sometimes the the best release music isn't always the stuff that's the most polished. And this is an example where something doesn't need to be super polished for it to be really good. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I, the, the rawness of it adds, I think, to... It, it just adds to the overall um, enjoyment of the music, you know, like it, 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 it gives you that that cold feeling of the Swiss mountains and it gives you <laughs> like that really dark, like purple night sky, gloomy castle, like evil type that listen. And I just I loved it. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel the same way. I mean, it, it was it's done very well, you know, even though it's a demo, it sounds almost professional, you know, if it was just a little bit more produced better it would it would sound like an album but it's it's good enough the way it is and like you say Lou, it's just it doesn't really matter what the production sounds like the songs are there and they're all good so it's it's a really good demo and it should just really be considered an album and greg uh this is what got you into the band you were talking about this uh we were talking yesterday in a chat and uh, somebody gave you this tape right? yeah well actually it was uh the Oh, and of course, someone comes home right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, back in the late '90s, the very first bootleg of it that showed up on CD, you could mail order it out of the Relapse catalog, and that was what my buddy had. And when he got it, he brought it over his brother's house, and I was over there hanging out, and I was, saw the cover. I was like, "Oh man, that looks really cool. What's that?" And he's like, "Oh, dude, this is their first demo. You got to check this out." So. That was what I first heard and got into them, and I already knew Celtic Frost, so when I turned it over, I was like, oh, Tom sings on it? This is awesome. And it, it, my first thoughts were, because really, Corner definitely has their own sound. They always did. Uh, mm-hmm. They they even do here, but I the rawness of it, and definitely his guitar tone here, is more geared towards how Frost sounded, especially 
Emperor's Return and right. uh, Morbid Tales era. Uh, but I can still tell it's not them, but to, it sounded like Celtic Frost taken to the next level. Like guys that can just play amazingly. And the funny thing about that here is they haven't even refined their attack yet. Right. I mean, you know, the way they up the ante on Rest in Peace is just insane. <laughs> yeah. But then these songs themselves are so good. I mean, uh, the first one, Spectators of Sin, is just great. Mm-hmm. If, if that was on a Celtic Frost album, that probably would have been the best song on it. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, No offense, yeah. Tom. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't take any offense to it because uh, he did a no, great job. No, no. It's actually um, in the documentary. It's really cool. Him and Martin are super humble about it. They're like, yeah, we love them guys. You know, they, they were unique like we were and we all stuck out. And they're like, but the beautiful thing is that they were such better musicians than we are. So they were amazing to watch. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. All right. So then we get, like you just mentioned, uh, rest in peace. All right. R.I.P. or whatever you want to call it. Um, yep. The actual debut album. Um. Yep. And like which, you said, so the front cover. Marky Bassett's from this, got the, the records. Yeah. Oh, so the logo. Um, Marky, who was the drummer, was always big on the album covers and their uh, merchandising and everything. The logo is based on Motorhead's logo. Ah. All right. And this is a picture he took of a gravestone in Zurich. Mm. These three urns on the back are real urns. Tommy Vetterly's dad, the guitar player, was a police officer in Switzerland, and he would have to sometimes transport bodies. So hmm. they talked him into holding on to three urns for them <laughs> <laughs> to take the uh, back cover photo at one point in time. <laughs> I had a feeling that was taken. Uh, the 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 band logo was taken from Motorhead. That influence. It, 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 I just said I know I've seen that before. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, that's and, and they're right. That's a classic font and with the arch. It just and it really works for it too, without looking like a ripoff. You know, just inspired by. Yeah. I'm surprised they yeah. didn't agree a lot too Agreed. over the O or something. <laughs> nah, good thing they, good thing they didn't though, because it would it wouldn't have looked right. No, it wouldn't. It doesn't need it. No, it looks know. much better without it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But. Uh... I, this, like you mentioned before, they really matured on this album. You yeah. know, it doesn't. It, this sounds like they're starting to come into their own and, and being a uh, corner. And uh, Tom's not on this, obviously, right? He doesn't do anything on this album at all, right? No. The, uh, the, after Noise received Death Cult, they uh, had Coroner record a th- just a three-track demo with Ron singing with just them and send it in. And then they said, okay, extended them the record deal. And then they gave them the advance to do this. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I, so. they don't, you know, Mar, um, Tom Warrior, you know, got them their start. And then they took it and uh, went their own way. And they did an awesome job. I mean, to see where they came from with the demo and then with the debut album, it's just, it's almost like almost a, a different band in a way, you know? The, oh, definitely. The their, their their attack is super refined here. The playing's very different, and even though you know they, they I mean, really, they created technical or neo classical yes. thrash metal. Really, yeah. I mean, um, Vo- Voivod developed their own brand at the same time, but it's way different from this. You know, they they. They use classical influences kind of similar to something like Malmsteen or some of the other shredders do, but they always focus on Mozart uh, or something like that. You know, Corner will bring something weird like Debussy or Rabin into it, and it it works and it's wild. Yeah, and, yeah, and you um, can tell between like all the intros that they keep using, like for the uh, for the album, like the beginning of the album, they use that intro. What is that like an organ or something? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can just tell, like they have that that uh, classical like uh, influence with them, because uh, all the intros they got the, like the classical guitar sounds and just you know they add all that stuff in there. And bands like this usually don't do that kind of stuff. They just usually start thrashing out and then that's it, you know. But they no, add a lot right. to their music. Well, yeah, and uh, you you know a lot of the arrangements and the riffs and uh, the guitar runs in the songs are closer to classical than you right. know Slayer. But <laughs> right. yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
And and th- this album, though, I mean, this is, and it's funny because Tommy said it, uh, it, well, they all said it in the interview about it, but th- this is their show-off album. This is their, look at what I can do. <laughs> and it is. It's just, it's total balls to the wall. I mean, you could not shove any more notes into these songs. Right. But the thing about it is the, the, their way of writing the music and how tight they play together, it just it works perfectly. I mean, it, it mm-hmm. all has heart. It sounds great together. Yeah. And it's lightning fast and amazing at the same time. Yeah. Cool. And catchy, like we're born through hate. Right. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to get to the songs. I was let uh, Lou start off with how you feel about this album. Not one bad song on the entire thing, it, and the, the in- same thing. and the instrumentals, uh, they grabbed me from the intro with that beautiful piano. You know, it's it's the funny thing is though, with with that intro, it doesn't prepare you for what's to come, especially oh, no. if this is your first time hearing this and you haven't heard the Death Cult demo. But then we're born, uh, we're born through. Hey, comes on, and it's how do I explain this? It kicks you in the balls while it takes your mother from behind and owns her. That's the nicest way I could. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to lie. Uh, there was a part of it where uh, the chorus kind of reminded me a little. Greg, I apologize for saying this. Please don't hate me. A little bit of it reminded me of Master of Puppets. But, you know, I say that as a compliment, not as an insult, because I do love that album and I love that song. But. You know, going through the entire CD in one sitting and just not wanting to skip to the next song to see what else they got. It's like, I, I really just wanted to sit and absorb everything. And I tell you, even the instru- I love instrumental music. Like, Alan Holdsworth's one of my favorite musicians to listen to. 95% of his stuff is instrumental. Mm-hmm. And I can sit there and listen to it and enjoy it. I when Nosferatu, as soon as Nosferatu started, it just grabbed me. Like that's probably the song that grabbed me, and that's not taking anything away from their lyrics or their singing. It's just when you, in in my opinion, when you're when when one of the instrumentals is the best song, it's it's a testament to their musicianship. And oh, no. a, the album reminded me of like the lo-fi production of Show No Mercy from Slayer. Obviously, the the Celtic Frost is in there as well. And there were times where it kind of reminded me of like the hardcore slash street punk styling of what came out of the Bay Area. I mean, it, it definitely had overtones of that in there. And they just they just did not disappoint. How many bands can you say 10 out of 10 on their debut record? And Wayne, the fact yeah. that you the fact that you said, you know, from Death Cult to R.I.P., how I, 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 I and you just said it, by the way, I apologize that I'm stumbling on my words. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot but you, things you I just, said too. <laughs> you just said like, you know, how, immature. It, it left a lot. It left immature. How many times how, how many bands can you say that about from their demo to their debut album, hmm. that maturity? Because normally their debut album is an extension of their demo. Right. This was just what the hell? Like yeah. you know, just like I said, it's like almost a completely different band is doing this album. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, you can still tell it's the same guys. Yeah, they have yeah. a very distinctive style, but yeah, the the leap and growth is just amazing. Yeah, I think so too. Um, and some of the songs on here, because like like you said, Lou, there's there's not one bad song in this whole thing. I mean, I'm really I'm I love Thrash, and and there's some bands I really don't care for but i still like them or whatever and i don't like every thrash song and every thrash album or whatever but and i always you know find songs i like over others but uh this one thrash album i mean there's just not one bad song on here but and it's hard to pick one that i really like you know but as i'm listening to it earlier uh reborn through hell uh, the opening track it's just a great opening track and it's very uh, catchy. reborn through what it says reborn through hell. Oh, he's got the CD reissue with the I misprint. It, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I like that. I thought it was it's hate, right? Reborn yeah, through hate. Yeah, it is reborn. That's what I thought hate. it was. Yeah. And I, I wrote down. And yeah. yeah, I could show you that's what it says on the back of the And you know what? I, I'm hearing it as I'm saying it. 
And I'm like, yeah. wait a minute. Hell. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't reading it wrong because I just got these fucking glasses. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Fuck you, Walmart. <laughs> nah, vision works. Walmart I probably would have gotten good shit, but I digress. I could have got you a discount at Walmart. Anyway. Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> but uh, born th- reborn through hate. Great opening track. Very catchy, actually, for a thresh song. Oh yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I love the chorus, you know. And and what I love about them, and you know, one thing, uh, Harris Johns, who produced this, was amazed by. He said he'd never seen a faster bass player. He said it, he thought it was insane that the bass player was playing it and matching the tempo of the guitar player. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, they're fucking awesome, yeah. you know. But, uh, but the uh, the the riffs and the and the bass playing and even the drums, it's all just as catchy as yeah. the uh, uh, lyrics and the choruses in this song. Yeah, I think so too. And like, uh, it still has some elements from the demo, but you can tell they have matured a lot. You know, uh, Suicide Command. Uh, this song sounded like a, a destruction song, like the way they with the fast guitar playing. Yeah, this I know. Reminded that me too. a lot of destruction. Destruction and uh, Sodom is also yeah. who I thought of. Yep. Oh, well, they can play much better than Sodom, but yes, <laughs> and even Destruction, because at the time Destruction was terrible. Oh yeah, <laughs> it just. Oh, oh who God. doesn't love Matt Butcher? Uh, I do, but you know, it's just. Uh, oh, Sen- Sentence of Death and Infernal Overkill are my favorite too. Oh, I'm yeah. not even gonna lie, but yeah, uh, God, they're awesome. Yes, all the love in the world to Schmier, whose name sounds like a guy with a butter knife and cream cheese on a bagel. Schmier. <laughs> love it. All right, that was a bad one. Sorry. Right. Terrible, terrible. I, I, would, have per- show, I would have personally said a gynecologist, but, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, his first name, his first name is Hap. Yeah. <laughs> Pat, you know. I know it's Mike. Whatever. Oh, my God. But as a whole... Like I said before, awesome album. And uh, if you haven't heard this album, please go do yourself a favor and get it. If you get any corner album, make sure it's this one. Because uh, th- there's no bad songs on this one. No, there isn't. And even though I love every song, in it, Nosferatu is another one that's great with the, um, yeah, the <clears> intro, intro and everything. Yeah. yeah. But my my favorite, too, is Fried Alive, which is just yes, amazing yes. in its <laughs> intensity and has... And it's really hard to say because he is such a great guitar player, but that's one of my favorite solos he's ever done. And then how that fades into Totentans, and then Totentans just goes insane, and then it mm. fades out, and then it fades back in. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that <laughs> outro leaves so much like as, as of a uh, wanting of the listener to see, oh my God, what are they going to come out with next? Mm-hmm. Um, there's one thing I got to say about uh, Robbie's guitar playing, and... Uh, I uh, I mentioned this to Greg last night in a conversation, and I think he wanted to slap my face when I said this. But um, I'm going to uh, defend what I was saying in that his sweet picking style definitely reminded me of the better moments of Ingve Malmsteen. However, with the exception of the fact that Robbie actually knows how to play without coming off like a douche nozzle. So... <laughs> Much respect in the world for his guitar skills. I mean, I'm finding influence in them, right? You know, the more I listen to it, especially uh, the R.I.P. album. It's Tommy, by the way. Oh, I thought Robbie was a guitar. Wait, Robbie's. Well, Mark is the drummer. Is the bass player. Ah. Marky is the drummer and Tommy <laughs> is the guitar player. There is no one named Robbie in this. Well, band. now there is. <laughs> <laughs> I if you if anyone members of the band corner are watching this, I apologize. You could send me hate mail or a dead chicken's head, and I'll accept it. It's okay. I'll give you his email address. Add his address. I I I don't think they'll mind, but uh, <laughs> I could suggest to them that uh, we we have you wear white and black striped spandex uh, uh, to to make an atonement. I think they'd get a good laugh out of that. <laughs> First of all, you you'd rather go blind than see me in black and white spandex. <laughs> and number two, I'm not P Way from UFO or Steve Harris from Iron Man, so it ain't gonna fucking happen. <laughs> oh, and boy. and three, thank that. you for correcting me. I do apologize for the goof. Yeah, not a problem. But um, uh, ju- just because I knew this was gonna come up, um, yeah, I went back and listened to a couple of the Malmsteens I had just to and. Uh, Coroner is such a tight unit. Um, 
I don't know. They got a lot more heart in what they do to it. Malmsteen, a lot of it was pretty good. Not all of it was as bad as I remember. I still really don't like the couple albums I don't like. But uh, what was it? The first Rising Force and then uh, was another one. Uh, Whichever one he did in 84. But anyway, it's just uh, with him a lot of the time, it's not so much what he's playing bad. It's just he's out of sync with the rest of the band. And that bothers me. Yeah, I I don't hear it. I mean, it's, it's, it's a little too out in front, for example. You know, Tommy's going off like a fucking madman, but Ron and Marky are right along with him, but doing their own thing at the same time. It just accentuates each other, and it's beautiful. Mount's time will rip. Exactly. He'll, he'll rip something off, and it'll sound cool, but it doesn't fit along with the rest of what the guys are doing. But anyway, this isn't about Ingve. This is about Corner. But... It did give me a little bit more respect for Malmsteen, I have to say. And uh, also, we were just discussing, Greg, um, you said that Tommy had um, some influence from Merciful Fate as well on his album. Yeah. I could totally uh, see that. He mentioned that a big influence for writing this, and although you didn't hear it, Wayne, there was I did not. About I listened mi- to it twice. About, about midway through the title track, there, there's a couple grooves and a couple guitar runs there that really sound like the uh, faster parts of Satan's Fall. I'll have to really listen to it. A little influenced by it, but uh, yeah, no, the, uh, more production and sound wise on Kill 'em All, but they said Kill 'em All, Show No Mercy, Bonded by Blood, Malmsteen, Melissa, and Don't Break the Oath were some of their biggest influences when they were writing this. Those are some good albums that have influences of. Yes. I'm surprised. I'm surprised they didn't mention any like jazz or avant garde like type bands because it's. It's not your typical example of '80s metal, or what people would think. It's, it in my opinion, it's it shows such great musicianship. They were talking about different things um, that they were into, and uh, Tommy actually didn't get really heavy into jazz until after they did R.I.P. And you can actually tell on Punishment, the next one, there are some jazzier passages yes. on that. Where opposed to this is more just ripping neoclassical, which is still awesome. And really, there are two halves of the same album to me. They're both so perfect, but um, they still make a few little small refinements to what they were mm-hmm. doing on the next one. I'm surprised nobody came up with the term jazz metal. No, I tell you, you definitely could for them and Voivod. <laughs> I would say so. I, I'm just surprised nobody has ever ever came up with that because we got classical metal you know so it's it would work you know well, is there is there are there really any bands that you could say are jazz metal i mean like i i guess the term would be progressive but you know um i i, I mean i'm comfortable with the term fusion honestly because i, I just call I, it I, I, don't know, I don't know jazz yeah, metal, i, I, I hate Jazz metal is kind of a weird term, you know. It you, is. You, 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 same thing with neoclassical. I think that sounds stupid too. No, they're, they're they're adapting that to what they do, which is why I like the term technical thrash better for both of them. Yeah. And um, oh man, the name is escaping me right now. I forgot to write it down. But there is a big avant-garde band out of Switzerland that they were really into. That was a big influence on them as well. I just can't remember who it was. I mean, technically, you could call Candiria a jazz metal band, and Candiria sounds nothing like Coroner, so, you know. Yeah. That renders the point moot. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, punishment for Decadence with the ugly cover here. Yes. Um, I like this cover. I, I know it's not what they wanted, but it still looks cool. You know what it is? This looks like a Gravedigger cover. The Van Gravedigger. They have yeah. one that looks almost exactly like this. It's an EP. Man. So it, it reminds me so much of that one. And I, I actually like the Grave Dragon one a lot better. <laughs> but it's, it's cool. It's all right. It's just knowing what the original one looks like and then compared to this one, I just like the other one more. Here's a question. What? Um, uh, if you get, Take it easy. Um, <laughs> if you look at the Wikipedia page for the uh, Corner album covers, a lot of them have the black stripe on right. the uh, third uh right was that by design of the bands or was that like the label's idea or is that like some kind of special edition or like because no, was... i thought that was a cool look 
That was by design of the band, but the first album that actually had it on it originally is the original version of Punishment for Decadence. Mm. But they took the label took it after that very first press changed it to this and it didn't come back until uh they did the reissue cd series mm. but the original albums no more color metal vortex grin and then the corner compilation all have the stripe on the mm. side with uh with their logo which by the way is one of the absolute coolest <laughs> logos ever the little skull wheel mm-hmm. the tri piece I'm glad you pointed that out, Lou, because uh, that is one thing that I always noticed with Corner. They always had that little strip thing on the side of the uh, artwork. And I thought that was cool, because no other bands really do that stuff. No, I mean, uh, that's funny. I mean, Corner is probably the most consistent man in, uh, band yeah. in metal, if you think yeah. about it. Mm-hmm. In terms of quality of music and in terms of, uh, you know, uh, keeping with the theme of their um, artwork, which, again, much respect to them for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's cool shit. And, uh, Greg, what's some story behind this album? Well, Tommy went to jazz school in between when they recorded these two. So uh, it, uh, it, it influenced their playing here a little bit. They're a little little bit jazzier, a little bit more swing in what they're doing. Um, I mean, I think every song in here is great, too. Just mm-hmm. like with R.I.P., they're both 10s out of 10 for me. And I don't want to say anything on here is more memorable than rest in peace but this one has better production one thing i like about punishment a little bit better is you can hear ron's bass much more fuller on yes. here but um a lot of the choruses are catchier and a lot of the riffs are just a little bit catchier they are definite earworms on here mass jackals just an amazing one yeah there's a lot of good shit on here too but like um this, this, that, that, another that perfect clearer time. Yeah, that clear production, though, because he doesn't play the guitar any different here. But that clear production really ups the intensity of everything they're doing on this. Yeah. yeah. And, and again, they like you said, they matured again. You know, yeah. they, they brought a little extra thing. Like you said, he went to jazz school. He brought that element into the into this album. And they, with every album, as we go on, they change just a little bit. And they add a little bit more to each thing, except for the last album where they completely changed. But uh, but not to, for the worst. I still like that one. But You, you, you know, it, it really drives me nuts when people say that. No, we're not talking about Grin tonight. But I, I'll point it out when we do the second part. But when you listen to all their albums from Def Cult through Grin, you can hear the evolution, too. Yeah. Because yeah. it's... It's a little bit slower tempo, but it's not any less technical. No, it's just that's, different compared right. to what they were doing. Right. Yeah, yeah and that's why I don't mind it. I, I like I like the evolution of this band. I think they yeah. did it really, really well. You know. Um. So, Lou, I'll let you go. So with this one, the intro doesn't even give you time to absorb what's about to happen, and then all <laughs> of a sudden they uh, rip, rip into absorbed, which again, it's like. <laughs> You know, Jesus Christ, they do not let the listener off easy. That's and, one of my favorite riffs and thrash ever. So yeah, continue. But Greg, <laughs> that's, that's quite yeah. all right. Hey, I'm, hey, look, I'm I'm glad that you know you're excited that, uh, about covering this band because honestly, I'm grateful that you even recommended them. Thank you. Um, again, I, I agree with Greg. Not one bad song. Um, even the Hendrix cover, and I have to admit. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll, I'll 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 save my opinion on Let's that. Say your but... opinion. That's fine. What's that? Say no. You you can say what you want. It's fine. Okay. I normally don't like Hendrix covers. Mm. Um, I feel like Hendrix is one of those artists where it's like, you know, sometimes if if too many people put their spin on it, it kind of you know ruins what Hendrix did. The only time I ever really liked a Hendrix cover, other than Stevie Ray Vaughan, uh, his version of Voodoo Child was um, when. Four of the five members of Temple of the Dog did uh, Hey Baby, Land of the New Rising Sun for the Stone Free soundtrack. That was not a soundtrack, a tribute album. This was probably one of the few times where I really liked the Hendrix cover. But my favorite track on the album, again, and not taking away anything from the songs that got lyrics in them, but Arc Light, like when I heard yes. that, it was just, it, 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 it just, it, it made the guitar player in me very happy. So, you know. 
but there's really not again not one bad song and i could see where greg is saying that it's sort of like part two to r.i.p and you know the only other band that i could think of is probably one of my my favorite american rock band of all time van halen you take uh, albums one and two and it's like two parts of the same album you know perfect and it's in its uh sound and production and packaging and songwriting same thing with coroner mm. yeah I and mean, i agree with you arclight such a, a great uh instrumental uh probably one of my top favorite instrumentals right now because uh I don't really like instrumentals too much. Orion's my favorite, you know, Metallica, Orion, and now really? this one is up there too. Yeah, Orion's would... fucking awesome, man. No, not that that's your favorite. <laughs> Arc Everything I say is not a cut on Metallica. I meant that you weren't <laughs> a big fan of instrumentals. No, I'm not. I'm not at all. I'd rather yeah. hear vocals and stuff. Mm. I'm not really a huge fan of... Uh... Sometimes I think vocals and words ruin the song. <laughs> it depends. It depends. Yes, you you are right. <coughs> Sammy Hagar. <laughs> no, that's just that's just he ruins life. Greg, he ruins life in general. Let's face it. Oh come <laughs> on! Stop. I'm terrible. sorry. Fuck that Ronald McDonald ramen haired looking motherfucker. <laughs> Jesus. All right, next week we're doing a uh, a Van Halen show, but we're only doing the same. And angle. Wayne's by himself. That's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> Anyway, but yeah, I'm not a huge fan of instrumentals. And actually, um, like Insta- Ingve Malmsteen stuff, some of the instrumentals I don't really like. I'd rather hear the vocals with it. Um, I don't know why I'm bringing up Ingve again, but that's just yeah. what came to my mind. But uh, like you the, said, you, well, the, the, the Ingve is a good example, though, because I mean, like I said, you know, especially with this album, with Tommy getting into the jazz and just how how much catchier a lot of the riffs and stuff are here, you know, it doesn't need the vocals to be memorable and have you follow along to it like that. Like Mm. shadow of a lost dream. I love it. That's probably my favorite song on this record. And mass jackals great too, but as memorable as the choruses and the lyrics are, I mean, I could, I could hear that guitar riff or Mm -hmm. just even the drum intro to that and instantly know what song it is. I, that I noticed a lot in this album, but like, especially absorbed when, as soon as it started, I recognized it, you know, right away, you know, just always recognized that song. And I love that one. And arc light. I love that too. I I love the intro. It's a really cool little intro they do there. And son of fall song son of fall oh, it's I a love son of fall. great yeah. song it's it's thrash but it also has just like basic heavy metal parts in it you know it goes back and forth a lot and uh, it sort of has a megadeth type feel to it as well it does a little bit Me- a lot of megadeth. Uh, megadeth and that's also the one well like you said like straight heavy metal that one actually makes me think a little bit of like new wave of british heavy metal style bands kind of like maiden yeah. and stuff like that yep yeah, there's a lot of mix and shit going on in that song. And uh, Voyage to Eternity. Yeah, I, I, I love that song. See, I'm used to hearing this on vinyl. I, mm-hmm. I do love the Purple Haze cover. I think they do it great. They do it their own way. But I don't like it as the last track on this album. Mm-hmm. I had forgotten about that Wayne mention to me, and I listened to it like that on my computer the other night, and I can't take it. Voyage to Eternity's the, the perfect ending to this mm-hmm. album. It yeah. needs to end at the end of that song. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> what were you saying, Lou? Um, ah, they probably just wanted to throw Purple Haze at the end of it because they just wanted to put the songs that they wrote mm-hmm. at uh, the beginning and not take away they, anything from them. But uh, just to piggyback on what we were saying about what they're actually playing on the record... Um, in my opinion, what defines a musician is knowing what to play and when not to play. In this case, yeah, it's technical, but but so what? Every note matters. It yeah, works. Exactly. Yep. Everything is done with a purpose, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Once once it serves no purpose, then it it's not enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. That that's definitely does not happen on this album. And uh, what else was I saying about Voyage to Eternity? A lot of really great guitar solos on this. Not typical thrash. It's kind of like all over the place. Um, just an awesome song. You, you and, skipped uh, New Breed, though. I you didn't mention New Breed. Oh, I love New Breed. I don't. That's I didn't go great. down. I just you know picked up my oh, favorite. Oh, my mistake. Okay. Yeah, I didn't go through all the whole, yeah, the, whole, the whole thing. That's one of like, my things. Yeah, it's hard. Like like I, like Greg said, this is another perfect ten album. So it's hard to pick songs over here. You know, it's just a really good album. Um, 
The only thing I don't like, and Greg, you said too, this Purple Haze doesn't really, it's not really supposed to be on the album. It was added later on, right? No, it's the B-side to Mass Jackal. They yeah. added it to the CDs later on. Yeah, so yeah. it doesn't really fit. And I don't, I, I'm sorry, uh, Lou, I don't like Jimi Hendrix. That's okay. <laughs> I, I don't like Jimi Hendrix. I hate Purple Haze. I wish I never heard that song ever. It's played yeah. out as fuck. Let's it not is. get I'm it twisted. Of, I'm tired of hearing it. Well, you'll hate the Cure's version more. <laughs> uh, I hope I never hear that one. Uh, I, I, I kind of wish I never heard you say that, uh, but I definitely <laughs> will not search that out. I kind of don't want to hear that. <laughs> yeah, I, I never want to hear that song like ever. I mean, it's cool that they they added their own spin to it. They you know they sped it up a lot. You know, there's a lot of double bass and it's it's heavy. But I just I just don't like the song. Okay, look, Hendrix is an acquired taste, like everything else. You know, it's just you either like it or you don't. I I love it. I I find it yeah, in here. And yeah. you know, I just wanted to uh, make sure that you know, I, I the again the reasons why I enjoyed it was because it it is a Hendrix song, but it sounds like Corn are doing a Hendrix song, right. and right. it just it just works. It works when a band makes a, a cover song their own. So. You know, mad props to them for that. So exactly, exactly. Greg, yeah. anything else before we wind the show up? Uh no, not really. Uh, but Punishment for Decadence is probably my favorite from their early stuff. Maybe right. even my favorite overall. Yeah. Very interesting. And Lou, this is the first time you've listened to Corner. I willingly admit I've never I've heard of Coroner uh, before you mentioned we were covering the discography. I never had a chance to listen to them. I hate myself for life for not knowing them <laughs> until now. And I really hate myself for fucking up the guitar player's name. Um, I think I think it was because uh, I don't know, because I was talking with my cousin Robbie, who's serving in the military right now. And uh, I miss him. So. You know, just thinking about him. Good guy, uh, great guy. You know, hope he's doing all right. But yes, go check out Coroner for the uninitiated. <laughs> well, uh, Lou, I'm just as bad as you are. I was telling Greg this story. Uh, I, my uh, grandfather goes used to go yard selling all the time. He went to this one house. This kid had a bunch of cassettes for sale. Mm -hmm. He says, "I gotta take you over there to get to look and see what they have. Maybe you can find stuff that you want." I Billy, go over there. you like Engelbert Humperdinck? <laughs> no, it was all heavy metal stuff. It was all oh, actually, stuff. it was all thrash and death metal stuff. A lot of stuff. I, it was too heavy for me at the time. And there was corner stuff there. And I look at it. And I knew the band's name. And I look at the covers and the artwork. And I'm like, ah, it looks like it's just like too death metal for me. So I had left them there. See, I wouldn't even thought it would have looked death metal. I was, I thought it would have looked. Just by looking at the logo, I would have been like, all right, these guys are definitely influenced by Motorhead somehow. And, you know, again, sometimes it just works when the band tricks you into listening to them. Because right. how many hardcore punk kids probably picked this up, took it home and go, oh, I'm a metalhead now. You know, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. so, stup funny. Yeah. Stupid me. You know, I left it there. But, uh, it, but the other stupid thing is I did pick up Celtic Frost and uh, the band Devastation. So those, you know, it was pretty much the same kind of style band as, as corner so it was stupid out of my part and if i would have bought those cassettes i would have been more familiar with this band and i kicked myself in the ass ever since that day Very yeah stupid. but here we are now talking about them so i know exactly you know? exactly and i can't wait to get to the next half because uh they're such a great band and uh hopefully greg is there ever a sign they're going to put a new album out or anything or what Yes, they um COVID's held it up originally was supposed to come out last year. Now it should oh. be coming out this year. Um they do have a new drummer whose name escapes me at the moment, um, because Marky left. Mm. But um it sounds like it's gonna be a great album. I'm super excited about it and I'm really happy they decided to put another one out. I mean overall it, well, see. It's hard to say because I love Voivod too, and they're both unique. But <laughs> think if I could only have one thrash band, it would probably be Corner because I and I've always had one of their albums at some point. I mean, they're much like Voivod. As soon as I first heard them, I never stopped listening to them. Yeah, Corner just blew my mind instantly, and it's all great. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> is. I'm definitely excited about covering the uh, second half because that ends up uh, becoming my favorite part of the corner discography. 
especially by the time we get to the end. I'm not going to say any spoilers, but, you know, in the 90s, I was really into um, progressive metal, you know, including what Death uh, released with Symbolic, uh, bands like Cynic. And it's funny because I always wondered, I'm like, you know, these these are great musicians, but they couldn't have, you know, just created this sound all by themselves. And I'm going to figure out how to tie it all back to corner mm-hmm. by the time we get to the second discography. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just can't um, honestly watch the documentary. There's a ton of bands that they mention and guy and musicians in there that are death metal musicians where they relate quite a bit of stuff. Bands I never even thought of before until they name it as an example on there where I'm like, wow, you really can trace that back to rest in peace. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm definitely gonna have to try to watch that before we do the second half because uh, just remind me, send me a link or whatever. I well, it's on I'll YouTube, show, right? Show. Yeah, uh-huh, it's yeah. called Coroner Rewind. I can shoot you both the link. Yeah, every everybody out there, I highly recommend you watch it and uh, definitely buy the box set and support the band if you can afford it too. But if not, get out there and get the original albums because they they will not disappoint you. I'm definitely gonna be looking for a T-shirt. Yep. Good luck and on that one. And hopefully it supports the band and not some asshole bootlegger. I, I think they... Uh, it's not Bandcamp, but I think they have their own direct page. I was just looking at it earlier. I just can't remember what the t-shirts were. No, no. Just go look up Corner. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's all I gotta do. But on also, while you're looking up Corner, look up Rats Out Review. RatsOutReview.com. And look up Rats Out Review on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and also look for us on Hami Media Group. And Lou... What's your show, and where can we find your show? Well, you can always find me weekly with the Rats Eye Review Boys, Wayne and Greg. And you can also find my podcast, Music is Life, on Rats Eye Review. You can also find me on YouTube. I'm adding more content. Just finished two interviews uh, this week. So I got a lot of work ahead of me. Got another interview for Sunday. And hopefully come the month of August, I'll have something special for um, for people. I'm not going to announce what it is, but I'm excited. And... Hopefully it, uh, hopefully you know, makes a lot of people out there really happy. So we'll see. Anyways, cool. Rats Eye Review, dig it. Awesome. We will see you guys next week with Corner Part Two. All right. See you there. Cheers. That's right. Bye. Cheers.